Hey everyone, how's it going? So, it's uh, it's Christmas Day right now, and I just got the telescope set up because I'm planning to take some moon pictures tonight. So I figured I'd make a little YouTube video, show you guys how I shoot mineral moon images, and um, also maybe do a little bit of a camera experiment with uh, using the planetary camera and my deep sky camera. So I have a, um, a 183mm, but I also have a QHY600 I want to try using for moon images. So yeah, it's going to be a little photographic adventure tonight, nothing serious, just some moon shots, and yeah, hopefully you get something cool. Alrighty, so I'm all set up now, ready to get on imaging, but you can see the moon right now, it's still pretty low and it's still a little blue out, so I'm going to wait for dark. Um, and I'm actually going to wait until probably closer to midnight or one, since uh, the moon is going to be closer to zenith. and when the moon is highest, you look through the least, air, the least air and you get the best picture that way. So that's what we're going to be waiting for. Um, but before that, I wanted to talk a little bit about mineral moon images. So the main principle behind getting an image of the mineral moon is you need to stack. If you don't stack, then it'll be very hard to get the colors. By stacking, you increase the signal to noise ratio of the image and you're able to actually saturate the image further. And all saturation is is stretching the color channels harder and harder. So you need lots of data to be able to stretch them well and to be able to see any colors to begin with. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be shooting video frames with the 183mm. I'm probably gonna be doing around 2,000 frames per channel and stacking 35 to 50% of the frames and that way we'll build up a large amount of data and we'll be able to get a clean signal to saturate a ton to bring out the actual colors. If you're going to do this with a DSLR though, you could do similar and stack multiple images instead of recording video frames. So you can shoot mineral moon images with pretty much any camera, you just need to be able to stack. And I'm going to handle the stacking with Auto Stacker. Uh, it's pretty much the best stacking program out there these days for planetary or lunar work and solar work. So we're going to be using that to bring out the colors in the pictures and also some of the details as well. So yeah. That is the gist of it. As you can see, I got my telescope set up and it is very much pointed at the moon. And now's the time to start actually capturing frames. So I'm just gonna, I don't know how much of this I'm gonna show, but basically, um, as you can tell in my field of view, it's really small so I can't actually fit everything in, and I'm gonna have to do a mosaic, which actually presents a lot of problems later on in editing, uh, very annoying problems. When I'm choosing my exposure for the moon, there's some things to keep in mind. You just gotta be careful that you don't clip certain parts on the moon, because there are a couple craters that are really, really, really bright, and it simplifies things to just keep one exposure time throughout all data sets, so it's just helpful to make sure that you're not clipping everything or anything at all in every filter first. So stuff like this over here, that clips really easily. So I'm just gonna pick an exposure, check red, green, and blue, make sure I'm not clipping in anything. I'm very slightly clipping it looks like, so I'm what I'm gonna do is drop my gain. Now I can be sure I'm not clipping anywhere. But now all we have to do is go through and start capturing our panorama frames. So it's the next day. i running the ZWO 183mm. That camera shoots a lot of data very fast and my SSD for some reason wasn't up to handling it. So I ended up deleting all the data I shot with that and I threw on the QHY600 instead. This is more of a deep sky camera though, but since it has a full frame sensor, I'm able to fit the full moon. 
and I can just shoot it in one go. So this will be a lot like shooting it with a DSLR basically, and it should have about the same amount of detail since they both use 2.4 micron pixels. So I won't have any resolution loss, I'll just have less data to work with. So what I ended up doing is I shot 30 frames per RGB channel and I'm going to be stacking each of those and then color combining them and editing an image from that. Let's get to editing. Alrighty guys, so we're back at the computer now and it's time to start editing the data that we got. Uh, due to a comedy of errors, I could not get the QHY600 data to color balance properly. So what I have instead is a set of DSLR images taken um, from the next night. Uh, full frame still, and uh, this will be a bit more useful for those uh, trying to follow along or produce a similar image because most of you are likely to have DSLRs. Anyways, the first thing you're going to want to do is um, <clears throat> take these raw files and convert them into TIFFs. There's a million ways to do that. You could use PIPP, you could use Adobe Photoshop Camera Raw, you could use PixInsight. Uh, pick your poison for converting these into a format that AutoStackert can recognize. So what I'm going to do now is pull up AutoStackert. We're going to open up all of our image files and you need to switch this from all supported video to image files because it won't be able to see them otherwise. And we'll just grab our images, open them up, and then we can start to stack the data. So there's the moon. Um, this is a surface and not a planet, so we're going to stabilize this by the surface, not by the center of gravity. Uh, so these settings are all fine as they are here, and what we're going to start with is analyzing the data. So this is going to stabilize the frames, align them, and it will uh, analyze all of the frames for their quality. So when we go to stack, we can decide how much we want to reject and how much we want to keep in the stack for detail. Uh, I'm going to keep a majority of these since seeing was pretty good, it's high up, and I'm more concerned with getting signal to build color than I am how sharp the mountains are. So what we're going to do now is place an align point grid, and this will just act as alignment references for stacking the frames. And I'm also going to drizzle this image because uh, I use DSLR and the pixels are 5.4 microns, so I'm a bit... Uh, curious about getting more resolution. So what this does is it increases the resolution of your image using the drizzle integration algorithm. It works pretty well, uh, so we'll give that a go and then we'll just stack our image. Alrighty, so stacking has finished up and as you can see the resulting image looks pretty nice. It's very clean, it's got some good details in it, and the next thing we're gonna need to do is actually balance the color channels properly so that we can, you know, see the minerals and that kind of thing. <clears throat> I'm going to be doing this in PixInsight. There is a worse way to do it in Photoshop, um, but I'm going to show you this PixInsight method. So the first thing I'm going to do is split the RGB channels like so, and then we're going to come up here to the linear fit process, and we're going to use this to color balance the images. So I'm going to use green as the reference since it has the most signal, and then we're just going to linear fit all of our images directly to the green. All right, now that those have been linear fitted, we're going to go in here to channel combination and I'm just going to grab all of our images that we've just linear fitted and I'm going to apply global to merge them. Now this is a color balanced image and I can get rid of these other images, do not need them. And now we can check our saturation to see if the minerals are brought out properly. And those are the colors that you exactly want to see. You want to see the blue and the orange balance nicely like that. There is a bit of color noise. We'll deal with that later on. But that is how you get these nice mineral colors in your images. So I'm going to start going through and uh, editing the details in the image. I'm going to time lapse pretty much through the editing. Um, you can do whatever you want, you know, whatever curves. I'm going to use deconvolution wavelets. Um, some curves, then I'll be doing some color noise reduction and stuff later on. But yeah, that's how you get the colors in your moon picture. So uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy this next little sped up part of me editing.